Today I'm going to talk about how I got six pack abs for the first time in my life in only two weeks. I'm sorry. Do not be sorry. Be better. I want to tell you the truth about how you can make a radical change in your physique very fast and detail exactly the steps that I took to go from this to this in two weeks. So let's get right into it. Actually, first we're going to do some reps. So how to get six pack abs in two weeks. First of all, you need a calorie deficit. You need an extreme calorie deficit. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to get six pack abs in two weeks if you're starting out 40 pounds overweight. It's not possible. Something like this is only for somebody who's already in decent shape just to make a drastic visual difference, a motivational impact in a short period of time to kick off a cut or if they've been bulking, they've taking it a bit too far, they can dial it back in. So I maintained at least a 750 calorie deficit for 14 consecutive days. Some days the deficit was over 1000 calories per day. I was eating very small portion sizes, mostly protein. Some of my meals were literally just a single chicken breast or a single chicken cutlet. This is different from how I've eaten ever before in my life. And of course I was very hungry all day long. However, eating the protein helps to keep you energized and it helps to keep you satiated. So definitely, if you were trying to do this, eating small meals of just uh, sugary carbs all day long, it, it wouldn't be possible. And you need the protein to try to maintain muscle mass because when you're losing fat, you wanna keep as much muscle as you possibly can. A 750 calorie deficit per day along with up to four hours of exercise per day. I was doing strength training and I was doing cardio on the treadmill over there for up to three hours a day. My strength training sessions involved compound movements and isolation movements. I'd start off with something like a bench and then move into dips and flies, um, normal kind of stuff. Then after weights were done for about an hour each day, I would go on the treadmill for a long session and then I'd also go on the treadmill for 15 to 30 minutes after every single meal so that the carbs that I did eat weren't spiking my insulin levels. I was trying to stay insulin sensitive all day long. Going on the treadmill for even 10 minutes after a meal is a great way to accomplish that. Basically, I wanted to make sure that my body was able to be burning fat 24 hours a day for the entire 14 hour period. Now, this requires a lot of willpower. It's not sustainable long term, but there is a magic secret to it. And actually it's not magic, it's a pharmaceutical secret to it. This is not legal in a lot of places, but it is perfectly legal in Canada. And um, it used to be a fairly popular dieting drug overall, but nowadays it's only really popular in bodybuilding circles in the countries where it's legal because it's not really effective enough to make it worth getting for a lot of guys who are living like in the States where it isn't legal, but it's ephedrine. Ephedrine HCL specifically is what I used. It's called an EC stack. You combine ephedrine, typically the dosage is eight milligram of ephedrine HCL with 200 milligram of caffeine. You take that dose once or twice a day. Some guys go crazy with it. I go on the low end of it. I am a person who is very sensitive to stimulants and kind of a high strung guy at the best of times. So I only needed half doses. I was taking half a pill, that's four micrograms, along with half a caffeine pill, that's 100 milligrams of caffeine. This is like less than in a large cup of coffee. I was just doing that twice a day, um, all in the morning though. So one at like 7 a.m. and then one at like 10.30 a.m. Um, if you take it in the afternoon, this definitely will impact your sleep negatively. This is a great appetite suppressant. The caffeine and the ephedrine work synergistically with each other. And 
Along with being an appetite suppressant, it will actually increase your metabolic rate slightly, maybe up to 5%, I think it was in studies. And so for me, this can equate to like an extra 60 calories or so per day. And beyond that, ephedrine also has anti-catabolic properties, which means that it won't help you to gain weight. It's not anabolic, it's not a steroid, but it can help you to prevent muscle loss while you are dieting and thereby improve overall body composition over time. You take it for a two week period, typically. Some guys actually take this all year round. I know Greg Doucette, for example, he says he takes the ephedrine and caffeine pre-workout all year round. He doesn't use it as a cutting age, he just uses it as a stimulant. But I do two weeks on, then two weeks off, then I'll do it again for another two weeks and then I'll give myself at least eight weeks for my body to recover from it. Basically your body ends up down regulating the receptors that the ephedrine acts on so that over time it becomes less and less effective for the muscle sparing, the anti-catabolic effect. Actually I've read that it gets more effective in terms of the extra calorie burn but I don't really need that. I'm capable of doing cardio. I'm capable of watching what I eat. That isn't necessary to me. I don't need to have stimulants in my body all year round. So two weeks on, break for two weeks, two weeks back on at a low dose. I only recommend a low dose. It is a stimulant. You guys have to be careful with this. I'm not a doctor, obviously talk to your doctor. You're using a drug off label. It's meant to be a nasal decongestant. You're using it for an off label purpose. You have to be smart. You have to be responsible with that. If you take five pills at once and have a heart attack, that is definitely possible. Don't come blaming me. I'm not recommending that you take this. This is only what I did for entertainment and for documentary purposes only. So yeah, that was a big help in the process of um, crushing my appetite down so that I could stick to my very, very, very restrictive calorie goal each day and also giving me energy through my workouts each day. Uh, I think that this kind of a plan is still possible without it, but I think that you would be losing so much muscle without it that maybe it wouldn't even be worthwhile and it would be much more painful than it needs to be. Okay, so while we know that you can get results fast, it is possible. The problem is the weight rebound. Lane Norton talks about this all the time. He has a great channel. If you are in fitness, I'm sure you know about him, but if you don't know about him, definitely check it out. The problem with most diets is that the diets always fail. It's something like over 90% failure rate for diets, not because the person fails during the dieting phase itself, but because they rebound on the weight afterwards. Especially when you're doing a extremely steep caloric deficit, like I was doing, 750 calories as opposed to like 250 to 500 normal. Actually, I was doing 750 to 1000, but, but anyways. If you're doing such an extreme calorie reduction, you are going to especially be at risk of a rebound afterwards. So I had this in mind, this wasn't my first rodeo, and I planned for this, I planned for a diet break after the two weeks were up. I was gonna give myself three to four days to eat in a slight caloric surplus, and then the rest of the week, I was gonna just eat at maintenance before getting back on like a 250 calorie deficit. However, even with this awareness and this planning, I still cracked. And for two days after the diet was done, I actually ate over 1,000 calories in surplus. Meanwhile, I'd only planned to eat 400 calories in surplus. So this was really not good, but I was able to get a hold of myself quick. I was able to rein in the leash. And I ended up doing two days with a 1,000 calorie surplus and then a couple days with like a 100 or 200 calorie surplus. And then the rest of the week, I ate at maintenance and then the next week I was able to get back on to 250 calorie deficit without any hitches and I've been rock solid ever since. So definitely that's something you need to watch out for anytime you're doing an extreme or a fast um, weight loss phase. So would I recommend this style 
of fat loss? I'd have to say yes, I would. And that's for two reasons. One, because it gives you extreme motivation to see changes in your body happening so rapidly. And two, because you can accomplish so much more in a short period of time than you could with a regularly paced diet. On a 250 calorie deficit, it would have taken me 42 days to make the same progress that I made in 14 days. I figured this was a great way to start off my cut, make some progress fast, get myself feeling good about where I'm at with my physique, and that'll give me more motivation to train, to keep going, to keep dieting further. It's awesome to be at least at a relatively low body fat compared to being fat because when you're training, you are able to see the muscles well, you're able to feel good about what you're doing, what you're building with your body. It's a much better space to be in moving forward. Actually, I wouldn't recommend ever bulking because you get fat, you just lose motivation and you end up going off track instead of bulking. So I think staying lean is a key concept in making continual progress in the realm of bodybuilding or in the realm of fitness. Now, there's more to making a transformation like this than just losing the fat. I did lose fat. I think I lost about three pounds of fat and another three pounds of water weight over this process, which is nothing to scoff at for sure. But another thing is the tricks you can do to make it look like you've made more progress than you actually have. Number one is shaving your body hair. Your body hair obscures all your muscle definition. At the start, I wasn't shaving, I was fat. I didn't mind having my body hidden a bit, but halfway through I shaved and this immediately made a massive visual impact. Number two is tanning. Getting a slightly darker skin tone will increase contrast. It'll make your physique look better and more defined, especially in photos. And tanning has been shown to shrink fat cells. Your fat cells are actually sensitive to light and will react and get smaller after tanning. So I definitely recommend this. However, I live in Canada in the wintertime. Sunlight can be hard to come by even when you get it. The sun is at such an angle that it's refracting off of the atmosphere and you're not getting the UV light. So you have to go to a tanning bed for this. Where I live, I just went twice a week for a moderate time period. Obviously don't burn yourself, but it can be a great thing when done sensibly. And the third trick was dehydration. Now, obviously you don't want to intentionally limit your water, but when you're taking a lot of uh, stimulants, even just caffeine alone, it will dehydrate you. And I was eating very few carbohydrates. So when you don't eat a lot of carbohydrates, there isn't as much glycogen in your muscles and glycogen is what stores the water in your muscles. So you won't be able to store as much water, pretty much everything you drink will be going right through you. That will mean that you're getting dehydrated in this process and just that alone can make a big visual difference and definitely it can contribute massively to the amount of weight you're losing on the scale. That's it, that was everything I wanted to cover today. Just go over what I did for my two week fat loss, get six pack abs transformation. Definitely hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna make another video soon detailing my complete fat loss transformation. This was a totally different strategy and over a much longer period of time because I lost over 35 pounds and I'm not done yet. By the end, it'll be 40 or 45 pounds total change for a real drastic and permanent lifestyle and fitness change like that, you can't do a crash diet. You have to adopt a method that is sustainable over the long term and find out what works for you. So definitely stay tuned for that video. Like or dislike this video, either way, leave a comment about your experiences crash dieting. Did it work for you? Did you just rebound and put even more weight than you lost back on? And thank you for watching. You can connect with me on Instagram, Patrick Razor Sharp. I'd love to talk with you there. We can give each other some support, a check out our progress pictures, so on and so forth. That's great guys. Talk to you next time.